Believe it or not, <laughs> oh, this sloppy mess inside this bucket is gold for your garden and I'm surrounded by it right now. Weeds, they are weeds and my garden is littered with them right now. So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven different ways you can use your weeds to boost your garden's fertility, starting with some shears. Technique number one is to add weeds to your compost, but there are two important caveats. Number one, you don't want ones where the seed heads are really mature and fully formed because the seeds will still be viable once they get into the compost. And then number two, if they spread via rhizome or underground growth very vigorously, you wanna make sure they are fully dead. But if you have a patch of weeds like this, grab some shears and you're literally just harvesting down perfect fertility that you can add into the compost. So I come in like this. I try to cut them up nice and fine because of the surface area idea. The more surface area I have, the quicker they're going to break down in the compost. So just rake and collect all of the debris here. And if you're comfortable, you can toss this directly into the compost, provided you don't violate those two rules. But if you want to make sure it's dead, or you need more browns for your compost. Let me show you what I did over here. Over here, I took a bunch of weeds. I mean, this was absolutely covered and I chopped them up and scraped them into a pile and I left them on this cardboard sheet for about two weeks in sun. So that's basically desiccating them. It's drying them out completely, meaning that all of the roots are completely dead. So I could even put something as pernicious as Bermuda grass in my compost as long as I've completely dried it out. The other bonus here is a lot of us, myself included, I struggled to find browns for my compost or those carbon rich materials. By drying the weeds out like this, you can use these as a great brown filler in your compost. Weeds often grow or proliferate in areas that are lacking or overabundant in something, overly compact soil, overly soggy soil, too much, too little nutrients. In this area, what I can do is troubleshoot and say, okay, well, I have way too many weeds. I want to improve the soil. What's a simple way to do it? One simple way to do it is to take a tool like this that can just sever right at the soil surface and then effectively chop and drop your weeds. So I just want to come in and just scrape the top off just like that. Make sure I've severed. I'm basically just gonna leave it right there. Why? Because what they've done for me is they've been mining this soil, the roots have been aerating the soil, and all of this organic matter is going to break down into the soil at the top layer. So it's gonna start improving much like a cover crop would. So you can do this, chop and drop. What I would do is I'd just kind of like throw these back where I scrape them from. Another thing you could do is as you're doing this, you could have a barrel full of compost sitting next to you, and then you could amend over the top with some compost, throw some cardboard on top, throw some compost on top of that, and you have a sheet mulch with weeds as the base. Give that a month or two, plant into that, you sort of have a no dig in ground approach. So this, not only is it satisfying to do, because you get this nice sort of clear patch, but you're not removing all the nutrients that yes, the weeds in fact do have for the soil. Another way to use weeds is as indicators. So what I'm sitting next to here is just a bit of a neglected shady patch of the garden and I have some oxalis kind of sprouting up in a cluster here. And why is that interesting to me? I could just say, oh, it's another weed, but really oxalis is an indicator of maybe too acidic of a soil as well as a couple other things. Thistle is another one that's a good indicator. But what I can do is I can say, okay, well, my soil might be a little too acidic here. It might not drain that well. And that's why the oxalis is thriving here because it tends to do well in those particular environments where maybe my vegetable garden or my flower garden, if I planted it here, wouldn't do so well. So whether you're gonna use it to create a specific fertilizer mix to amend or just as general knowledge, you can collect, notice, and then use these in the compost, but thank them for giving you some info you wouldn't have had otherwise. My neighbor behind me, you can see, has a veritable fertilizer forest. So. I might offer a little volunteer services and get some myself, but I wanna show you a really interesting hack to know if you need to water. Weeds can be moisture meters or water indicators. So let me see if I can grab one of these. You wanna get one with a nice deep root and see if you can uproot the whole thing at once. So let me grab this and there we go. So what you wanna look for here, if this comes out bone dry, clear, clean, there's not a lot of mud or dirt on it, that means that the soil to this depth is pretty much dry. There's nothing clinging to the root. Obviously in this case, it's literally sprinkling on me as we speak, so I should not be surprised to see there's, there's a lot of clumps of dirt. It's sort of a brown, like muddy root, and I know that by cleaning it off. It's nice and white if I clean it off. So basically what I'm saying here is instead of digging down to see how wet something is, you can actually just pull a weed out of the ground, just like this, and you get a natural moisture meter. 
Believe it or not, weeds aren't a real thing. Weeds are just plants that you don't want growing in that particular space, but that does not mean that they do not have other uses. In this case right here, I have an edible weed. In fact, many weeds are actually edible. Of course, check your local guidelines, but this right here is mallow, and mallow is a fantastic edible plant. Doesn't have too crazy of a flavor to me, but certainly good to throw in stews. It's just like a green additive. Now, what I'll say is, again, check your local area, make sure you're identifying the plant you know is edible, but some other ones that are really great. Stinging nettle, actually used for nettle tea. I have it all the time, it's very tasty. Purslane is one that oftentimes grows in like little cracks and sidewalks, pickled with cucumbers. That is a delicious, delicious herb, and honestly, really good pickled. So weeds, again, don't think they're completely useless in the kitchen either. Back to this toxic sludge here, at least that's what it smells like. <laughs> this is just weed fertilizer. So what we did here is we took some of the weeds that we showed you in the beginning of the video where you're just chopping them up really finely, fill up a bucket full, ideally of rainwater, any sort of water is totally fine, and dump the weeds in. You can even throw a bit of compost or dirt in as an inoculant to kind of kickstart things, but you're just making weed fertilizer here. You're rotting weeds in water to get as much soluble nutrients out of them as possible. Two weeks minimum is the wait time. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the way you might use this as a fertilizer. And this isn't really an exact science. This is something that it's just a nice to have if you need to find a way to use these weeds. But I'm just going to siphon off I don't know, about half a jar full here. Looks delicious, absolutely tasty. And I've got 10 parts of water to one part of this weed fertilizer. I'm gonna mix that in. There you go. So let's go ahead and water my poppies and calendulas with this. Again, is this mandatory? No, it's just a choose your own adventure of ways that you can use weeds. And in Korean natural farming, many different sort of soluble methods like this are quite popular. I haven't dived too much into that myself, but I am studying it and we'll probably do some videos soon. But there you go, you have a weed fertilizer and you also have six other ways that you can use weeds in the garden. Stay tuned, good luck in the garden, my friends, and keep on growing.